My name is Sanaz, and I'm with the group Unis Resist Border Controls, and we were established in March of 2016, and we're a migrant justice group opposed to the everyday borders inside higher education. You may have heard of the term hostile environment policy. This was coined by Theresa May in 2012 while she was Home Office Secretary. Theresa May created a new item to add to the many years of racist and xenophobic immigration laws in the UK. Her endeavor was, of course, a hostile environment for people who have, quote, no right to be here, end quote. As Corporate Watch indicates, the plan is to make it ever tougher for people without the right for immigration papers to get a job, rent a flat, use a bank account, drive a car, get medical treatment, send kids to school, or otherwise live a normal life, end quote. The Immigration Acts of 2014 and 2016 have normalized this deeply racist and xenophobic law, preventing migrants from accessing things such as housing, health care, education, banking, among other issues. This has created enormous precarity and uncertainty and, of course, violence to both documented and undocumented migrants living here in the UK. Additionally, it has made it easier for the Home Office to detain and deport precarious migrants, particularly those who have fled violence born from the legacy of British colonialism and foreign policy decisions in places such as Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, Nigeria, Syria, and Yemen. Inside the university, the hostile environment takes the form of intensive attendance monitoring of migrant students and university staff. Additionally, as part of the hostile environment policy in universities, lecturers and administrative staff are required to act as border po police on their migrant staff and students. We are here at Morton Hall, a detention center that in the past year has been the site of four detainee deaths. According to the charity Migrant Justice, since 2000, 43 migrant detainees have died in detention centers. As a result of this hostile environment policy, Unis Resist Border Controls has seen an increase in migrant students finding themselves in detention centers such as Morton Hall. Just a month ago, a University of Sheffield PhD student from Iraq by the name of Ahmed Sadiq was detained by the Home Office in Sheffield during a scheduled reporting meeting uh, and sent to Morton Hall and was told that his deportation was imminent. This happened right during the Christmas holiday. Nearly four years ago, Ahmed applied for asylum when his hometown of Mosul was overtaken by ISIS. For the past four years of his PhD, he has had to report monthly to the Home Office. Doing a PhD is daunting enough, but imagine having to deal with a precarious sta status and the constant uncertainty of deportation over your head. Ahmed found himself in Morton Hall during Christmas holiday and remained for 10 days. Of his experience in detention, Ahmed stated, quote, at some point I felt really let down and this made me understand why so many people would want to take their own lives. I just keep trying to distract myself, but it did get to me at times. People were being deported all the time and every time a guard arrived, I thought they might be coming for me, end quote. Uh, we raised enough of a noise that Ahmed could be released from Morton Hall. However, his future still hangs by a thread. Ahmed could still be detained and brought to Morton Hall at any time and deported back to Iraq and to his death. We think and we ask that you continue to help support Ahmed in the coming months and fight for his campaign to remain in the UK. Detention centers the walls built in Calais, for example, and the hostile environment policy points to the growing everyday borders and the normalization of racism and xenophobia that especially targets black, brown, and Eastern European migrants. However, the history of Wharton Hall is not just one linked to immigration detention and deportations, but it also to the incarceration and prison system. Fittingly, Wharton Hall is managed by Her Majesty's Prison Service, Opened in 1985, it became a woman's prison before it transformed into a prison for foreign nationals and later became a detention center in 2011. Community Action on Prison Expansion reports that in the UK has, has the highest rates of incarceration in Western Europe, 
the conservative gar government is set to build four new supersized mega prisons with a combined capacity of at least 5,000 in South Wales, Greater Manchester, Kent, and East Yorkshire. It is not a coincidence that as the conservative government is imposing ever more draconian measures on migrants, which in turn expanding on prisons and the immigration detention services, the people that will find themselves being exploited by the increased carceral systems will be black and brown migrants. As, the, as CAPE explains, incar incarcerated migrants, along with their British counterparts, will be exploited as, quote, super cheap labor, end quote, inside the prison system while the conservative government continues to sell the idea of mega prisons as a new jobs thing that creates meaningful jobs, not, nor does it allow communities to address the structural issues such as homelessness, poverty, domestic violence, and addiction in order to prevent incarceration. If our opposition to Brexit, in addition to migrant and labor activism, are to be uh, potent and transformative, it must not fall on either the discourses and policies that privilege model migrants or seek to create divisions between non-EU, EU, and British workers. Lastly, our migrant and labor activism must also be firmly centered around opposing and challenging the increased carceral systems that are actively used by the government and corporations to exploit migrants, British workers, and to create the very violence and panopticon surveillance that both marginalize and criminalize black and brown, non-EU, EU, and British people alike. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey,